Hello Wise Tribe, I'm here today at Osler Health International with Dr. Neil Forrest to talk about the importance of keeping our mental health in check. As you're all aware, we are now in a semi-lockdown. There's no end in sight at the moment. We've been through it before, it feels like a long road. I'm here to talk about our feelings, um, to talk about how we're feeling, being real about our feelings, what can we do if we're feeling a bit low or a bit more than that. So, Dr. Forrest, um, we have been seeing uh, a lot of normalization about talking about mental health issues. Um, and I saw a stat the other day that one in four of us will suffer from mental health challenges during our lifetime. That seems like quite a lot, even if an individual doesn't recognize that they're facing challenges themselves, they will certainly know somebody. Is that your experience? What do you feel about that? Uh, thanks for having me, Andrew. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I think one in four is probably an underestimate, if, if anything. Wow. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that all those people are gonna run into severe difficulties that will require professional help, necessarily. Right. But uh, I think that we, 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 as a society, we probably underplay mental health as opposed to, to physical health. And as you correctly point out, if it's not you, then mm. for sure somebody you know will be going through something like this uh, at any given time. And if you don't ask them about it, you're very unlikely to, to find out about it. Right, it's very easy just to keep going on with your sort of daily life. So we're, we're talking about, um, again, going into this lockdown and um, when, you, when you're uh, keeping on with your day to day, you might be feeling a little bit flat. You might be thinking, oh gosh, you know, this again. Um, when does that feeling of being low turn into anxiety or even something more uh, turn into depression? How, how can you see okay. that? Well, the, the two things are definitely linked, anxiety and depression. It's hard to feel anxious all the time and not to become unhappy or sad about it. But if we deal with them slightly separately, so yes, feeling low is a normal human emotion. There's nothing yes. wrong with feeling low. And many of us in the past year will have had times where we felt particularly low. Um, as doctors, when we, when we talk about it becoming depression or becoming a mental health problem, mm. we're really talking about a situation where it's become more pervasive than that. So people who feel depressed feel low most of the time. They, more, they may feel more severely unhappy than, than they normally did. Right. And it starts to have an impact on their lives. So they may go out and socialize less. Yes. They may drink more. They may sleep less. They may notice a change in appetite, so they may gain weight or lose weight, yes. or not feel like eating food. Um, they may feel tearful most or a lot of the time. So those are, are signs that, that feeling unhappy has progressed into something a little bit more than that. It's similar with anxiety. So again, anxiety is a useful human emotion. It's supposed to get us out of danger. Yes. When we feel anxious about something, our brain and our body is primed and, and ready to act. Yes. And if we're running away from an attacker or, or something like that, then yeah. that, that's perfectly normal and, and, and helpful. What our bodies are not really designed to cope with is, is persistently feeling anxious most of the time. And so, yeah. so that heightened anxiety is supposed to be an acute thing. And when it becomes a more chronic drawn out thing, our brains were, were designed to be anxious about attacks and predators in you know, when we did thousands of years ago. Yes. They weren't really designed to worry constantly about mortgages, bills, relationships. Social media. Social media, <laughs> pandemics, that yes. kind of thing. So that's when anxiety will start to tip over into something more serious. And, and again, people might notice physical symptoms, inability to sleep, poor concentration, um, forgetfulness, yeah. Uh, being unnecessarily sort of angry or snappy with friends or family, the, those kinds of things. So, you know, the, the, these are the warning signs that things are 
becoming a little bit more serious. And also I might add something as well. Um, I think perhaps more people might be reaching out for ways to cope, to mask some of those feelings. So if you are, as you said, uh, perhaps drinking more, mm. um, you're reaching out for something to help you yes. to cope. Yes. So what are some other ways instead of reaching for those things to mm. try and help you through or mask what you're feeling um, to get you through the rest of the day, to get you to the next morning, yeah. to lift your mood? Um, what are some of the things that we can do instead? So th there, are, there are some things that you can do for yourself. They don't all require outside help. And sometimes just getting through it, you know, we, we, we talk about that almost negatively sometimes. Mm. Sometimes just pushing on and getting through it, yeah. you know, is, is the right thing to do. And it, you know, if you can see a light at the end of the tunnel and, you know, you feel able to cope with that approach, then, then that can be okay. But th I think that's only sustainable for, for so long. Mm. Things that you can do to sort of care for yourself and care yeah. for your own mental health generally involve having other outlets. They can be social, so yeah. going out and seeing people and talking to people. Yes. Um, generally people who are feeling anxiety and depression socially withdraw and have less social interactions than they once did. Uh, it may be things that you do on your own, like meditating, reading, exercising, certainly is, is, is the one for me that that's my go-to when I'm feeling a bit unhappy. Yeah. Um, and so the, you know, there, are, there are other things in life that we can take pleasure from, gardening, connecting to nature, whatever mm -hmm. it is for you. Um, and sometimes those things don't happen naturally. We have to put some effort into mm -hmm. making time for them and putting some effort into them. So it might just be doing things to help yourself. Mm. Working on your sleep, drinking less yeah. um, is, is a good one that you pointed out. It may be that you need to ask for help, but from those around you, so mm. from friends, family, whether here or back home, mm. um, saying, look, I'm struggling here, I need some help with this, I need some, 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 some suggestions to how to cope with this. And I think that comes, that's where, where helping others around you comes into it. We often say when we meet people, how are you doing, are you okay, how yeah. are you? But it's a nicety. We're not yeah. really asking the question yes. and, and meaning it. And so, you know, if you do have people around you that you feel close enough and comfortable enough with to really ask them, you know, how is it going? How yes. are you coping? Yeah. I think that's incredibly important. I completely agree with you and I think it's actually um, more important in our community as expats, mm -hmm. I think it can be very um, awkward sometimes for people to open up to their friends, no matter how close we are um, with our friends here in Singapore, um, oftentimes they're not friends who we've had formative experiences with, people that um, we feel as close to as those loved ones back home. And sometimes it can feel difficult to share yeah. those innermost thoughts and feelings mm. and not feel judged. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, and actually that's something that got me through my last lockdown, was I, I just picked up the phone to a couple of my closest friends and said, hey, I'm actually feeling really, really low and down here. Um, and I just talked and shared, and yes, it is a cliche, um, but talking about your feelings, recognizing your feelings, mm. Um, and, and not necessarily wanting a solution yes. um, can really, really help. So is that why people go to therapy? When we're talking about um, seeing a therapist and, you know, the, the, it, as I said, it's becoming much more normalized, there's less of a stigma attached, mm. but everybody says um, mental health issues, go and see a therapist, go and um, have them uh, listen to an, an iron out, if you like. Yes. Is, is that what we should be doing? Is, is the answer go and see a therapist if you feel that you can't cope on your own and you need to share? So it, it may be. So some mm. people will will either won't have the the tools in those first two groups helping themselves or, or, or asking friends and family. Yes. Or they might not want to. So I, yes. I see I see some of my patients come to see me and say. I have the most amazing husband and he's incredibly supportive and loving. We have a great relationship, but I can't talk to him about this. Yes. Either he can't empathize yes. or he's got his own stuff going on yes. and I just can't, I don't want to burden him yes. with it. So some people just don't have any other outlet and that's yeah. where a GP or a therapist or someone professional can 
can yeah. sort of lend a confidential and comforting ear. And some people just want perspective. They just mm. want to tell you their, that what they're going through, what their problem is, and they want my opinion or experience, having seen hundreds of other people in the same situation of yes. either, yes, this is really bad, we yes. need to do something about yes. it, or no, actually you're doing it, you're managing this, yeah. you've got the right tools, have a think about doing this or that, and everything's gonna be okay. So I think sometimes, particularly for expats in Singapore who might have fewer friends and close friends and family resources yeah. to, to, to call on, then having somewhere they can come like this and, and yeah. speak openly and yeah. confidentially about it is the first step. Yes, that validation, that reassurance, and um, some some a kind of point in the right direction yes. as to how they can better manage exactly. things. Yeah. I think it's important to talk about the uh, the differences between GPs and, and, and therapists. Definitely. Um, absolutely, you can go straight to see a therapist, you can go straight to see a, a, a GP. Speaking as a GP, reasons why why some people come to see me first. Yeah. It may be that they want to see a therapist, but they need to be referred to one either because right. their insurance requires it, yeah. or because they don't know who to see and they're looking for a recommendation. It may be that they have physical symptoms that they're worried about: fatigue, poor concentration, weight loss, weight gain. That they we we want to run some preliminary investigations to make sure that there isn't physical underlying cause for the way they're feeling, yes. because they're often can be. Yeah, that's really important. You don't know whether it's something that's in your head Correct. that's causing your physical yes. symptoms or the other way around, yes. whether you're down because of how your body is feeling. So I've seen a patient this week with, 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 with low mood and anxiety yes. symptoms. She happens to be severely iron deficient. Right. That's probably not the whole cause for all the symptoms, but we know that if we fix some of these physical problems, which is very easy to do, yes. then we're going to empower them and, and make them feel more able to cope with the mental health. Yes, side of less things. tired, less irritability, Correct. just generally yeah. better. So there may be this sort of this interface between physical and mental health question. Yes. Um, it's some people are more keen to hear about or think about the medication route they might okay. not want to do therapy for a number they may have tried it before and it didn't work mm. they may not have the time or the inclination mm. um, they may not feel comfortable with it and they're more interested in, in saying is there any medicine I can take to make me feel better for many people there won't be but mm -hmm. we can you know prescribe medications for, for depression and anxiety sometimes that's okay. appropriate and sometimes we do that so there are, there are a number of reasons why we're the first port of call yes. for some people. The other one that I mentioned to you before we came on air was um, people getting their partners to come and see me. So, so a, a common thing I see is, is a, a, a partner that has been booked in for a, a general checkup or an annual screening or some physical symptom that their other half is worried is actually a mental health problem, mm. but they haven't been able to convince him or her to go to the doctor about their depression. Yes. So, well, why don't you go about your insomnia or your fatigue or, yes. or, or whatever else? So it can be a, a foot in the door to actually opening the conversation. Yeah, so that, that's something that I wanted to ask is, you know, obviously we are all going through this together. We're all experiencing this challenge as one. Um, and as you rightly said, you know, we might be under the same roof as somebody you don't want to burden your partner because they're also going through mm. the same challenges and having to deal with it in different ways. Um, so this might be a good way to ask them to come and see a GP yeah. um, about something else. But also, you know, um, GPs, are, as a family doctor, you do look at so many different aspects of life. Absolutely. You're not just Absolutely. So we, we often know our patients quite well or yes. we get to know them quite well. We talked about partners, kids and, and particularly teenagers is yes, the other area yes. that we've seen a lot of in the, in the past year and so sometimes a parent will come and see me in advance or we'll have a, right. a, a video consult in advance to go through what their concern is. Oh, that's are a great idea. Because they're worried that their teenager will show up and... And it's all kind of awkward in the room and yeah. nobody wants to make the first yeah. move and you don't know how yeah. to broach the subject. Or, or they don't want to talk, to it, talk about it in yes. front of their child so yes. it's, it's much, much better for them to voice their concerns to me in private first. Yes. Then I've got more background information to work with when I see the, yes. the young person come in themselves. So yes. um, yeah, I think you know, the pandemic has 
disproportionately affected the lives of younger people. They've made more sacrifices at key moments in their life for fewer yes. benefits for themselves because they're not really at risk of, of, of COVID. So um, how, how can we help those young people in our homes who you know, are, are sometimes resistant to that help? Oh, just leave me alone, I just want to be on my own, slam the door, and you think that you know, maybe time on their own is what they need yes. to relax and chill out and calm down and do process in the way that they need through reading or mm. time on their own, whatever, or the tools that you were saying. Um, what, how can we help them? It's, it's so awkward. We can't go out. We can't take them places. No. Um, we can't let them socialize. I mean, I'll keep it brief because that's a whole a other topic. conversation <laughs> in itself. But I would say just be there for them, yeah. even if they don't want you there right yeah. now. Um, and try and give them little windows of their life that are as normal as possible in yeah. a very abnormal and atypical world. Uh, yeah. I think we need these little glimpses of of reality and normality to, to remind us that you know, we will come out the other side of this eventually. Yes, yes very important. Well, uh, Dr. Neil, I think we're gonna have to wrap up there. I think um, well, I've learned a lot today, actually. Um, thank you so much for your tips and guidance. Um, I think it's really important, you know, we, especially as women of the household, um, as you said just now about talking about teens and young children, it's about being there. Um, and we have to be strong, we have to be the pillar of the household as well um, and so it's important for us to fill our cups to make sure that we're resilient mentally um, so everyone I would urge you to uh, take up Dr Neil's advice and help yourself do those things that um, help to keep you on an even keel and further to that reach out for help, um, talk to each other ask each other how you're doing, share what you're feeling. And um, there's also an amazing fact sheet which we're going to share with some resources on mental health that you can check out uh, to help you along the way as well. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Neil at Osler Health International. Thanks very much, Angie.